Hello, and welcome back to The Offspring Magazine, the podcast. It's Bea, and I will be hosting today's podcast. Today, we will be releasing the Instagram Live that we recorded two weeks ago with Lynn Key from the Open Science Working Group of the PhD Net. As you can guess, today's episode will be about open science, specifically what the Open Science Working Group is doing to promote open science within the Max Planck Society. We will also go into detail about the Open Science Ambassadors Conference that they are currently organizing for early career researchers, such as postdocs and PhD students. And this Open Science Ambassadors Conference will include talks, workshops, roundtable discussions, all about open science. So listen in to get all the information about the Open Science Ambassadors Conference that you want. Okay, so then now, thank you everyone so much for joining. Um, this is the first time we're doing an Instagram Live event, so let's see how it goes. Um, we're here with Lynn. She's from the Open Science Working Group. So the main topic of today's podcast will be about um, open science, uh, what the working group is doing, open science practices at the Max Planck Society, their Open Science Ambassadors Conference. Um, so that's kind of the general theme. Um, Feel free to just ask questions whenever you want. We have Xiran here. She'll be reading out the questions and we'll try to answer everything that we can. Um, so yeah, so then why don't we just start by having you introduce yourself? Yeah, uh, so yeah, my name is Lynn Key and I'm a PhD student um, at the Max Planck Institute for Security and Privacy. And on the side, I'm also um, part of the Open Science Working Group, uh, which is within the Max Planck PhD Net as well. And yeah, uh, so I, I, I guess like to just, uh, because some of the open science stuff might be related to what I'm knowledgeable about, um, I did my undergrad in psychology and then now I'm in more of like human computer interaction and computer science. Um, so just in case if anyone has any questions about like um, other sciences when it comes to open science, um, uh, yeah, I guess like most of my perspectives will be coming from, I guess like the psychology and like computer science good, good. part. Yeah, that's really mm -hmm. cool. Um, so why don't we just start by having you define what open science is mm -hmm. and why open science is so important. Yeah, uh, so open science basically refers to the, it's like the process of making the research, the research process much more transparent and able to be reproduced and I guess just like to help like facilitate for stronger science overall. Um, basically, it's so I guess I'll start off with what it is. Uh, open science is basically just this umbrella term, and it also includes things like open data, um, open peer review, open methodology, um, and yeah, so basically, uh, and also like open source as well. Um, and it basically refers to like different aspects of the research cycle. So there's like open data. So this is the process, the act of making research data that's um, open basically for other people to uh, see and also edit and add on to if they need. Um, and then um, also like repurpose for their own uses as well. And then there's also open methodology. So this would be in papers. Uh, this could include things like um, pre-registering a study. Uh, so for example, in psychological studies, you could um, basically like you have your, it's like you have your whole uh, experiment planned and you kind of, it's like, it's kind of showing to the world, these are my hypotheses, this is what I'm gonna do and this is how I'm going to do it. Um, and then just in the paper okay. writing itself, uh, just making it more transparent, just like telling people enough information that if someone wants to um, replicate your study, they have enough information to. So I'm just gonna ask you a quick question about these open methodologies. So there, mm -hmm. do you think that research papers right now don't give enough data as to how they've done an experiment or maybe their thought process to it, their hypotheses, for mm -hmm. example? I think um, I can I can speak to more of the uh, I guess like what I'm doing in my PhD is more in like the human computer interaction space. I think there um, I haven't had many issues like I think it really depends on in computer science like it really depends on the field. So I know in human computer interaction reviewers are very keen on um, having quite a lot of uh, information in the um, in the methodology that people can replicate it. Um, However, I do know that in other fields, especially uh, other computer science fields that are trying to do more user studies and stuff, sometimes like uh, a complaint that's often 
um, repeated is that sometimes there's not enough information right. um, that's like yeah. given because uh, these researchers aren't trained um, necessarily in like these uh, human-centered research methods to kind of know like oh like you should report like the sample size or like the participants and stuff like that. Okay. I okay. guess. But, okay, so we have open data, open methodologies. Right. Didn't want to interrupt you. Oh yeah, no worries. Uh, there's also open source. So this is the process of, uh, for like more computer science or just um, if you have code or something, just the process of making your code um, readily, uh, I guess just like, uh, again, like available for other people to see and add on to as well. Um, and then there's also, I believe, open peer review. So this is the process of trying to make peer review a much more transparent process. Um, so this would mean, for example, um, just, uh, I, th I guess like when a paper is published, um, making the peer reviews um, public as well for other people to see and uh, yeah. So the peer review comments. Yeah. You mean. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And let me just check if there's anything else I'm missing from here. But yeah, I think those are what I have on my in my notes. Right. The different, right. Yeah. Before going to every. <laughs> right. Okay. So um, now that we've established what open science is, I think that's very clear. Mm -hmm. um, just, I guess, a way to make science more transparent in every single way. Mm -hmm. What is the working group doing? So specifically the open science working group to kind of help promote open science. Yeah, so the open science working group, what we're trying to do is to increase the, no I guess, um, increase the knowledge of open science um, amongst, uh, especially amongst early career researchers within Max Planck Society. And then also to help facilitate knowledge sharing as well, especially, uh, so like we have, we're aiming, um, or I guess I'll, I'll get back to um, uh, trying to, increase knowledge about open science um, depending on the different fields and all like open science and like different aspects of it are not so well known so we're trying to work from kind of like the ground up like starting with like the early career researchers so like PhD students and postdocs and trying to increase um, I guess like discussions and uh, just like knowledge about open science from the ground up and then hopefully like um, just show that it's that we care about it and then uh, hopefully this gets spread out to like um, to higher up uh, within Max Planck Society and and then yeah to, to kind of create more institutional change I guess um, okay. just like from the bottom up. Right so what is the Max Planck Society trying to do to promote open science? Um, I think that uh, from what like we've had very good interactions with the with the general administration with the Max Planck Society. Um, it seems like they're very keen on um, promoting more open science. So um, we've had quite a bit of support. So for example, the Open Science Ambassadors Program. Um, we're also uh, we're also helping. We're get, we're getting a lot of help from the Max Planck Digital Library. Um, and then also recently as well, the Vice President of Max Planck Society also started organizing the. Um, the open science panel. So this is where uh, different stakeholders from uh, Max Planck Society um, come together to discuss uh, open science uh, in the present and kind of the future as well. Uh, so they gave um, early career researchers three seats, I believe, in the panel. So like for uh, PhD net, which is taken by the open science working group, and then there's also postdoc net and then an open science ambassador cool. as well. Um, so yeah, yeah, just yeah, trying to, I guess, um, yeah, like we've gotten quite a bit of support from them uh, with like promoting open science. So I guess, though, the support that you've gotten is promoting open science through communication, mm -hmm. right? So are there also certain actions that have been taken to help promote open science? Um, yeah, so one of them would be, uh, I guess, like the, one that, the, the thing that we're planning right now is the Open Science Ambassadors Program. So this would be a much more, uh, so this event would be in person as well. And we're trying to create, um, we're trying to get... Uh, more, uh, I guess we're trying to get more open science, um, how, do I, how do I say this? I guess trying to get more people um, from different institutes like to work together and share knowledge about open science and then also to get, to get more resources about open science across the institutes. And um, I guess like that's like the more tangible way of uh, like spreading the word about open science with us. Okay, since you've mentioned open science, uh, the uh, ambassadors conference mm -hmm. numerous times, <laughs> let's just straight away, you know, go full deep into what exactly it is, because I think that's um, one of the reasons also why we're having this podcast is to promote this event, to make people aware of this event. So why don't you just start by telling us what it is, yeah. when it is, give us all the information. Yeah. So the Open Science Ambassadors Program is this event that we're planning um 
basically, uh, it is an event, it's a two-day event, so it's uh, 19th and 20th of September. Um, it's going to take place at Harnack House in Berlin, and basically we're going to have at least okay, one... Okay, wait, let's slow down. Let's give yeah. the date again. So that uh, is? 19th and 20th of September. Okay. Uh, let me just double-check, actually. Good. Yes, 19th and 20th of September. <laughs> Everyone can write that down, take notes. <laughs> yeah. In so, Berlin. In Berlin, that's right. And yeah, it's going to take place at the Harnack House as well, so that'll be very cool. It's like one of the historic uh, Max Planck um, buildings that they own for like different events and everything. And yeah, so it's going to take place there. And the plan is to have at least one open science ambassador or uh, represent, uh, representing um, each institute within, Max, uh, within like the Max Planck Society. And the idea okay, so your aim is to have one person from each institute yeah. come to represent their institute at the conference. Mm -hmm. And this student or this person can be anyone or preferably a PhD student or postdoc. Yeah, our focus right now is on early career researchers. So this would be uh, postdocs and PhD okay. students. Um, although the funding for PhD students is guaranteed. And then if you're a postdoc, I think you just have to have approval from your institute to, um, to just like travel, uh, to just give you travel funding. Okay. And, yeah. we, have, we have a question from yes. Palina and uh, she or he asked, does the MPG Open Science have their own Instagram or Twitter account? Ah, uh, sadly not. I believe we're just, we're mainly posting with the Max Planck PhD net. However, we do have a website. Um, let me, I believe it's, uh, it's again like with the Max Planck PhD net, but I, yeah, if you could just like Google us, um, we do have our own website. Okay. Yeah. okay, wait, I'll repeat that question in case people didn't hear. So this question was about um, whether the Open Science Group has uh, an Instagram. But they do have a website, so that's right. That's good. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah. So going back to the Open Science Ambassadors Conference, mm -hmm. then. So we said one PhD student or postdoc would kind of represent the institute at this conference mm -hmm. um, in Berlin, and maybe they could get funding for it. Do you have to apply? Yeah. Okay. So again, um, this would be on the Open Science Working Group website where you can just find the link to our uh, our Open Science Ambassadors program. And then there's an online form that you can fill out to apply uh, and, and attend. So who decides then who gets to attend? Like what if you have multiple PhD students? Oh, that would apply? be wonderful. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I believe, um, actually, that's a good question. I think I might, I'll have to follow up at some point okay. um, if this case, if this does happen. But I've heard that that we are open to having more than one um, attend. I think it's yeah. just like you just, uh, it's just an issue of funding and you might just, uh, it might just have to be that like they just get funding from their group or their institute right. to attend. Makes sense, yeah. yeah. So then what what is the conference about once you get there? Yeah, um, the plan is to have this two day kind of, uh, a kind of like casual event to have, we're gonna have a mix of lectures um, or like speakers rather uh, from different, uh, I guess different aspects of open science and then we're also going to have some more like hands-on workshops and then also uh, I guess more roundtables as well to have like more open discussions about open science in general. So I guess with the speakers themselves we've invited um, speakers and like some of them are like researchers that are researching um, or like conducting research in open science okay. and then we also have people who are um, like kind of like I guess like open science activists and stuff like that. And then we also have workshops. So these are much more hands-on, like how to apply open science uh, to your discipline. And then and then we also have uh, some social events planned as well. So yeah, it's a mix of oh, yeah. like fun and also like work and yeah, and like getting to know other people at other uh, MPIs and everything. So what is then the, oh, sorry, is there a question? Yeah. Actually, you already explained something and we have a question. What is the agenda of this conference? Does, it have, does someone have to present some poster or something if they would like to join okay so what is the agenda do you is there is the agenda maybe online already? it is yeah okay so it's, where where can they find the agenda yeah um just go on the open science working uh just like google the open science working group and then um it'll probably be like the first um the first uh like google search yeah. yeah google search i guess uh, i guess um could you find it on the phd net website I well? yes i believe you can if you yeah. go to the PhD Net website, Open Science Working Group, and yeah. then the, you should be able to find the yeah. agenda there. Exactly. Yeah, we'll have it. We have a separate website though for the Open Science Ambassadors Program, but we have like a list of the, the confirmed speakers and like the registration website as well. And, and so, do you already know? I mean, obviously the event is in September, mm -hmm. but do you already know actually the exact agenda that um, maybe you could also talk about now? 
Yeah, I don't know uh, the exact ag agenda now, just because we're getting some speakers and some workshop um, presenters uh, prepared and everything, but it seems like right now we do have um, a mix of uh, some confirmed speakers, like I mentioned, and then like the workshops and uh, yeah. like a round table. And, and the social events, yeah. very important. Yeah, <laughs> okay. exactly. Oh, and um, people don't have to present a poster, no. Uh, it's more of just like attending and then getting to know other people and then just getting people pumped up for open science, basically. Could they present a poster? Like, could they? Would they have the opportunity to if they wanted to? Ooh, that's a good question. I don't think we have that in the agenda right now, but that that is a good. Um, that Maybe is a good just option, like over yeah. like an hour, over lunch or something. Yeah. Um, yeah. Okay. Cool. And so then, what what would be the aim then? So you have you know all these P different PhD students come together to talk about open science, mm -hmm. and you have one PhD student kind of representing each institute, and then. Are they, is it your vision kind of that they go back and then talk to their institute about open science practices? Yes. Yeah, that's exactly the vision. It's to have, uh, basically to start facilitating these conversations because we found that different MPIs have different um, levels of uh, knowledge with open science. So with some MPIs, like open science is a very, it's like a very, I guess, hot topic almost, like there are different committees like that just naturally formed. And um, people are like uh, people are much more aware of like different open science practices. Whereas in other uh, other MPIs, it's much more of a like people don't uh, aren't as aware. So we're trying to kind of um, make things a bit more homogenous when it comes to open science and just making sure that people have some sort of knowledge. And yeah, with the open science ambassadors, the plan is to have someone who uh, can kind of represent their institute. So like if other people from their institute have some sort of open science related question, like. Um, uh, like for example, like if they're in biology and uh, and like because there are other MPIs that also have like biologists as well, um, the idea is to have some sort of like communication. So like uh, this ambassador could then communicate with an another with another ambassador from another like biology yeah. MPI and kind of share knowledge like that. Um, so yeah, and then also trying to come up with uh, I guess trying to come up with this uh, like pool of resources as well that other researchers can. Uh, refer to as well if they ever have any open science related uh, questions or concerns. Okay, so by going to that conference, you basically become the open science ambassador for your institute. Yeah. And if anyone has any questions, I guess you're the best person then to go to. So have you done any, uh, have you done an open amb science ambassadors conference in the past? Yeah, we've had a few in the past. Um, although in previous years, it's been a bit shaky just because of COVID and all, but I believe this is our first, um, I'm, I also just joined the uh, Open Science Working Group this year, but um, I do know that it's happened in the past, and yeah, I believe this is our first uh, since, or, or at least our first in person, I believe, um, in like a couple of years, so yeah, it's very exciting. Okay, cool. Um, yeah, so then specifically also about open science practices at each individual institute because obviously when you work in different sciences maybe the way you approach open science or how open science is within that science is different like you're talking about computer science mm -hmm. but maybe for chemistry for me it's completely different mm -hmm. um, and different practices are needed different conversations are needed so mm -hmm. when you go to the si open science ambassadors conference how do you also ensure that you kind of can talk about open science related to your specific field mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a good. That's a very good point, actually. Um, so we're not fully done with uh, preparing the open science workshops and everything, but I think that's actually something I'll bring up with the open science working group as well as trying to facilitate more conversations. And I think um, with the current agenda, we're also trying to do that as well with like the different um, roundtables as well, and then trying to bring in different. Um, or I guess, yeah, trying to bring in, like, different speakers with, like, relating to different fields. Yeah, different backgrounds, exactly. But, yeah, but I, I think that is a, that, that is a very yeah. good point, and I think we should perhaps um, add in a bit more, like, uh, like field-specific stuff as well for the uh, ambassador's program. Yeah, cool, mm -hmm. okay. And so accommodation, is that also then paid for since it's a two-day event, you said, right? Yeah, I believe the accommodation should be paid for, um, although perhaps if there's someone in the Open Science Working Group uh, like, they can just confirm that as well in the Instagram Live. Um, but yeah, I believe it should be paid for along with the uh, the travel costs as well, if you're a PhD student. Yeah. Okay, very cool. So, it's, I don't know, can you kind of say how big the event is going to be? Yeah. Roughly? Um, how I many people you're expecting? I would anticipate that we're expecting a bit less than 100 people. Like, I, I think the plan is to have, like, one person per institute. Um, so... 
Uh, although maybe if we have more, then we'll probably have to start uh, capping it at a certain level, just because um, Parnak House has only uh, a capacity for so many people. Right, right. But yeah, but it would be great, you know, if we had um, a great like number of attendees and everything. Yeah. I, I think, think probably yeah. Is there a question? I think because we have some delay, like ah, yeah, uh, that could yeah, be yeah. And now uh, I think the colleague from Open Science Group she said it should be covered by each MPI, and the travel and accommodation should be paid for by the managing director of the each MPI. Okay, so basically sort it out with your institute yeah. uh, <laughs> for the funding. <laughs> right. Um. Yeah, so I think what would what's also really nice about the Open Science Ambassadors Conference, especially having one person from each institute, is kind of like an exchange of what gets done at each individual institute. And that's what I'm actually really curious mm -hmm. to know, what is everyone doing to kind of promote open science? I guess, you know, on a whole wide level, I've mentioned this to you before, um, the, M the Max Planck Society publishes everything open access. I think mm -hmm. that's, right. that's a great achievement already for open science right would you agree with that yeah i agree yeah like even um yeah that's right i think it's wonderful that um that we can publish open access however not every it, it's also like very costly as well and i yeah i realize that, like there's a lot of inequality when it comes to different institutes and different countries as well when it comes to publishing uh open access and as a result i think yeah just uh, i think like uh, yeah like there are quite a few barriers i think to making things open access but i think that we're in the right direction though as a yeah. society when it comes to this so is there anything that maybe your institute is doing for open science or maybe one of the the other members of the open science working group that you've helped kind of promote at your institute yeah that's a good question actually i'm to be honest, and I think this is also why it's very important to have the Open Science Ambassador as well, is uh, my institute, um, so I'm at the Max Planck Institute for Security and Privacy, and we were only established in 2019. Um, so as a result, I think like we're, we're still kind of catching up with a lot of, uh, like, like setting up a lot of things, as, as you've seen when you visited our institute. Um, yeah. So I think, uh, like, I think um, as a result, like, I'm actually not fully sure of what's happening within other groups. And everything like I know for some people like they're making they're making an effort to make their code open source, and then um, with my group I think we're trying to be open with our methodologies and everything as well, um, and then of course like open access which is everyone. Um, but other than that, I'm not fully sure about um, like what's happening within my institute either. Yeah, yeah. So this is this is why the Open Science Ambassadors yeah. Conference is great because this is a good way to exchange ideas also. So yeah. if anyone. Um, that's listening has any ideas or wants to comment on what their institute is doing please feel free to do so yes. and we can have a discussion about it as well um i think our institute or i don't know if you lost the cat or convention this oka uh theoretical yes. calculation software it's kind of contribute to this open science to the open I, I think i agree at the uh, orca which is um mm -hmm. a, a package that we use to do computational chemistry mm -hmm. Um, yeah, that's that's a good point. Yeah. So apart from the Open Science Ambassadors Conference that you're mm -hmm. organizing, what other events or um, projects is the Open Science Group working on? Yeah, um, so right now, uh, oh, so I should also say we're a group of six people. Um, so there's um, Ashmi, there's also Pamela and Ivana, um, Pablo, um, Anna and myself. Um, so right now, I think we're, we're focusing like I would say like 95% of our energy on just planning this Open Science Ambassadors program. And then uh, we also participated in the Open Science panel, like I mentioned before. Um, and then, yeah, when we have the Open Science Ambassadors, just trying to come up with more resources for open science, uh, for open science for the society. And if anyone on the Instagram live or podcast is interested in joining us, please, um, please feel free. Like we would love more hands on deck and yeah, just trying to spread yeah. the word of open science. Yeah, no, uh, definitely. So how much work does, does it require to join the Open Science Working Group per week on average? I would say it's relatively relaxed. Um, yeah, like we are, oh, I guess because the Open Science Ambassadors Program is happening in a few months, we are meeting like once a week. So it's like a one hour meeting once a week. I would say like maximum two to three hours a week. Um, yeah, and that's kind of like, um, but yeah, um, I guess, but perhaps the group coordinators uh, do a lot more with like coordinating with the ad, ad, with the administration. But um, but yeah, for me as someone that joined uh, somewhat recently, it's not like a super large commitment, and I'm I'm still able to get research done and everything. Yeah. So yeah. Um. And how long has the Open Science Group existed for? 
Uh, yeah, so to my knowledge, we, we have been existing since 2018 um, uh, as part of the Max Planck um, PhD net. Uh, basically, we, we were kind of formed, um, I believe before us, there was the open, open access ambassadors. And, and everything, and then we realized, oh, like we have to focus on um, like we realized like open open access is rather widely known, and we have to yeah. focus on like open science and right, yeah, and that's how like I I believe yeah. that's how the working group kind of formed. Yeah, yeah, yeah definitely. I think uh, th yeah, I agree to the point that like open access is well known, mm -hmm. but then um, the broader field of open science, maybe like open methodology, the, what mm -hmm. the things that you mentioned at the beginning are maybe a bit less known. Um, yeah. So what do you then envision kind of like in 10 years time, how do you hope the Max Planck Society will have changed or restructured mm -hmm. to contribute more to open science? Hmm, that's a good question, actually. I would hope that in 10 years, um, I mean, I think already like uh, we are we are doing decently well like we're getting quite a lot of support and everything but i think but i hope in the future you know there's just much more knowledge about other aspects of open science and much more uh support as well for these different aspects of open science um and then yeah i i also hope that there are more resources and then also much more um, communication between different institutes and uh and just like sharing of knowledge of open science practices and everything yeah um, but yeah, that's my hope. Um, yeah, perhaps if others in the uh, chat also have something, that'd be great as well. I think sharing knowledge is extremely important mm -hmm. for open science. And I think that's actually something that the Max Planck Society is maybe not doing that much. Like, mm -hmm. I think we yeah. have so many institutes that are doing top quality research, but the communication between institutes that, mm -hmm. you know, are in similar fields is... Um, I think is lacking. Maybe that's just my experience. Maybe others have a more positive experience there. But I feel like if we wanted to focus more on sharing knowledge, we also need to focus more of our resources on trying to increase the communication between the different institutes. Yeah, no, I completely agree. I think, um, yeah, like uh, our institute's rather new, so we're still kind of getting uh, acquainted with all the resources that are out there, but but that I agree. I mean, like you guys, I think are the closest in proximity to the MPI for security and privacy. But I've never uh, yeah. interacted with anyone here until yeah. today. And then um, even like I mean, there's also I think the institute that's closest to the MPI for security and privacy is probably the software systems one. Right. Um, but of course. Just, uh, at least for my group, there isn't a lot of communication. Um, is there between, not? Um, not so much, no. Okay. Um, and I guess also, like, physically, we're in different cities. Like, they're in Zabrugan and we're in Bochum, so, yeah. Do you but, think that some of the research is overlapping between the two institutes? Um, I believe there is, yeah. I know that for some other groups, like, there is a lot of collaboration, um, just because the researchers are in, like, a similar field. But for our group, um, not so much, and I guess it depends on the different groups. But I definitely agree. Like, I think there has to be a lot more communication between, like, the different institutes. And sometimes it feels like you're just in this isolated little institute until you remember, like, oh, like, there are over 80 of them, like, across Germany and, like, uh, other countries, too. And then, but yeah, I think just, like, yeah, more communication to make it seem like we're, like, one more... Yeah. Oh, here, uh, I guess uh, no, uh, one, one institute, yeah, would be wonderful. Yeah. What about then for open methodologies? Um, how do you hope that people will start being more open about their, their research that's being done and how they've done research? Because it's easy to say, you know, we should be more mm -hmm. open, but if there's no guidelines that people have to stick to, mm -hmm. some people are just not going to care. So what do you think we should do about it? Yeah, that's a good point. I believe um, also like open methodology and I'm sure other aspects of open science really depends on the field because uh, when I moved from psychology to human computer interaction, there was a big change, I think, when it came to um, methodologies and like the openness of this. And, and I, yeah, and like I might even say the rigor as well when it comes to planning studies. Uh, so psychology, um, is kind of it, it like I found in my experience like psychology is very good with open methodologies and is, and also like uh, pre-registering studies and stuff like that like it's almost um, it's a lot more common in psychological studies uh, also because there was a big uh, there were quite a few scandals um, in psychology uh, but then when I came to um, HCI and computer science it was a lot less like rigorous I would say in the sense that I didn't see as much um, yeah, like there are things that I felt like were kind of missing like, compared to, and just I, I guess like there's yeah is much more common and I suppose like there's more rigor when it comes to 
planning experiments and studies. Um, and then when I moved to HCI, which is a much newer field as well, and um, like and uh, like a psychology also benefits from like a very long history of uh, of just like experiments and like people who have done a lot of background work. Um, whereas HCI is a lot more of a newer field. And as a result, there what are... H, what, what's HCI? Oh, yes, sorry. Uh, Human-Computer Interaction. Ah, okay. Uh, thanks. Yeah. <laughs> I should have Maybe I'm the only stupid one. No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I should have defined it. Um, but yeah, like when I moved to Human-Computer Interaction and like uh, computer science in general, like it's a much more newer field yeah. and um, just reading HCI papers is a lot. Um, it's, it's very different because there aren't as many standards set. So like uh, also like the rate of publication in computer science is like super fast as well compared to psychology so just um i've just noticed like there's um i i think like there has to be a bit more rigor i think in like planning studies and uh pre-registering and everything um so i i guess like that's why um i think in the future i think there just has to be a bit like i, I guess it depends on the field really like i think psychology is leading it um quite well when it comes to open methodology and then other fields i think just have to catch up or uh, like gain similar or just like at least standardize um, and like come up with um, yeah just uh, and again I guess this comes with more history of, and like knowledge about the field and then just yeah like standardize uh, much more yeah I have a question do you think the open science can reduce the number of papers like there are papers oh, people people can. Yeah, it's yes. a good question yeah, yeah. so Xiran was asking um do you think that open science can help reduce the over uh, over publication crisis that we're currently undergoing? Wow. Mm -hmm. I also like that question quite a bit. Yeah, I think I do believe that could contribute. Actually, like I was, I was reading recently into like this concept of uh, slow science, or I guess more trying to do more intentional science as well. And I think perhaps with open science, like when you're questioning your research at different stages, it would make you kind of, perhaps it would make you question, like, what is the value of this? And like, is this experiment important enough that I want to go through these steps? And I think, I do think that open science would help contribute to that because you would have to consider at different stages and, and yeah, and like, and also um, with uh, pre-registering and open methodology as well, you kind of open yourself up to, I guess, scrutiny might not be the right word but it's like um you're making it a bit more public that people can like look and comment on your research study like oh maybe this is kind of strange or like why are yeah. you doing this and um but also like really good feedback as well like you can kind of get like uh yeah feedback like throughout the process and i think that would help quite a bit um with uh i guess curtailing this over publication crisis yeah i agree even though i think that um I mean, the Open Science Ambassadors Conference is great for students and early career researchers and like the working group is as well. But how much discussion is there between the directors about open science? Because in the end, you know, who determines what projects you're yeah. doing <laughs> and also the way you report your data, open methodology, it all comes down to the director level as well, mm -hmm. or the group leaders in this case. So I don't know if this is, you know, something that the PhD net should really be worrying about or not, but like... Are you guys doing anything about it? Do you know of anything that's being done? Are they talking about open science as well? Yeah, so you make a good point that it is, uh, ultimately it is like the people that are higher up, like our supervisors and directors. Um, currently at this point, we're not exactly communicating with them. However, I do think to the future, like hopefully, you know, we'll be the new supervisors and all, and then hopefully we are the ones that can help set standard or like, I guess like different standards if we don't have good standards right now. Um, and then be the ones like, hey, like let's do, let's have more open science practices in the future, and yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, we'll see. It's always, I think, difficult to uh, to get the communication going, yeah. but um, and you feel like there's a lot of support from the Max Planck Society um, yeah. at the top level to help you guys out. It it seemed like it yeah. from what you mentioned at the beginning. Yeah, I would say um, it seems like we have quite a bit of support right now, and yeah, and like hopefully we have, um, yeah, like uh, hopefully we have enough uh, people that are interested in attending the Open Science Ambassadors program to kind of get this program like running again. Yeah. yeah. So apart from now this podcast, and I guess the information is on your website, mm -hmm. are there any other ways in which you're planning to advertise the event? Um, yes, I think it's also... Uh, through the PhD reps as well at different institutes, um, trying to get them to just hype people up and just share information about that. 
And then we also contacted the different directors as well um, to just try to encourage them to get one person to come to each institute. So I think perhaps if we have someone with like more authority as well, then they can um, convince people to show up. <laughs> yes, um, I definitely agree. But directors are not going to be present at no, the event. No, they're not. Are they allowed to be there or no? <laughs> um, I don't, uh, that's a good question actually. Uh, perhaps if there's someone in the open science uh, mm -hmm. uh, working group that's there that can answer, that would be wonderful. <laughs> But yeah, currently we don't have, um, we're not planning, I guess, for directors to show up. Although I do think we might have uh, some faculty or, or like um, researchers uh, that are going to be taking part or like helping lead workshops okay. and discussions as well. So yeah. It, Can you reveal of any, any like the talks or the workshops who are going to be uh, led by? I can't remember any on the top of my head, but it is on the website. Like, we have like a list of confirmed speakers and everything, and we have people from different institutes and like even um, different MPIs as well. Um, and yeah. Thank you, Evan. Cool. Question. Since you mentioned about the public peer review, what can you do like from the Max Planck Society level or from the Open Science Working Group level? How can you mm, make this true to really publish peer review? It's actually a good work, then their CP sentence will show up. I don't know, should I repeat it? I don't know if people are, can hear that, because I guess you are quite close. But yeah, so, um, so it would just be about the, the peer review system. How can we make sure that it's actually peer reviewed? Yeah, that is a good point. Um, I'm not so sure what it's like. So uh, for my field, we publish in conferences, and like I know that for, I guess, for when, when it comes to open peer review, it wouldn't come at the, for us, it wouldn't be at the um, institutional level, it would be more at the conference level. Like, I know that there's some conferences that are uh, making their peer reviews public, um, like after they're published and everything, so that people can see like, oh, did they actually, uh, yeah, like I guess to see what reviewers are commenting on and stuff like that. Um, so from my knowledge, at least for computer science, it's much more at the like conference or like venue level. Um, and like whether they choose to have open peer review or not. Um, yeah, sadly, I don't know too much about the uh, societal level. Yeah. Um, okay, I yeah. think they um, answered uh, uh, the question you just said if the directors are allowed to join. Ah, uh, yes. And they said if they are willing to come, they're welcome <laughs> to. If they're willing to come, they're welcome <laughs> okay. to come, the directors. <laughs> But the program is catered for earlier career researchers and the vice presidential panel on open science will be part of the event. The panel is formed by the general administration, group leaders, directors, etc. One major highlight of program is a talk by UNESCO. I don't know what is it oh, yes. for their breakthrough. By open UNESCO. Science. Okay, so one of the yeah. talks will be given by UNESCO. Right. Oh yeah, okay. Cool. Yeah, cool. yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, that's, a, that's super cool. Yeah, we're very excited for that because UNESCO has done a lot of work with open science and we're having some. Oh, really? I didn't know that. Yeah. It doesn't surprise me, but I didn't know that. Yeah, yeah, so it's very exciting and we'll have like different perspectives and we also, I believe, have like some, uh, an open science activist as well um, or like she, um, she kind of reveal or uh, it'll be on the website, but yeah, she's done quite a bit of work with like advocacy for open science and yeah, so we're very excited to have some of our speakers and workshop um, cool. uh, leader, uh, workshop leaders, um, people that are planning the workshops, yeah. I guess. Yeah. Yeah. What got you into open science? Ah, uh, so I think it's actually from my third year psychology class. So uh, psychology has uh, had a, or has slash had a very big uh, problem with the replication crisis and like there were a lot of, uh, there's been a lot of I guess scandals that have happened with psychology and I remember in this third in my third year statistics class our professor was very big about uh like she was uh, basically like basically that class like we didn't actually learn statistics it was more about like we learned about p-hacking and like don't do this stuff. right and then I was very like I was fascinated that like this type of stuff could happen and I guess it led me down this rabbit hole of kind of uh, kind of like this scientific existential crisis almost like oh is this stuff I'm like reading real and like is the stuff I'm doing uh, or I guess like in the future real and I guess trying to yeah like I just want to be as good of a scientist as I can, I guess, and trying to learn about like science, um, not only for my field, but I guess like the, the yeah, just trying to make it like as uh, like transparent and replicable as possible, I guess. And it's just uh, yeah, and I'm just uh, I'm just interested in that, I guess. Yeah. 
And ever since you've joined the Open Science Working Group, do you think you've changed your perspective on the way you approach projects or the way you write a paper, for example? Yes, I think it has. Um, yeah, I think uh, although our working group discussions don't aren't about like, oh, let's do this um, in our research, um, it's much more, I would say, administrative with like the working um, with the uh, Open Science Ambassadors program. I think it's made me consider a bit more about um, I guess first off, it's like, I, I don't want to be like a hypocrite either. And like, I'm just like, oh, okay, actually, I don't want to talk about the methodology in our paper and everything. Um, but also, I think it's just made me a bit more aware of um, uh, different resources that exist when it comes to open science. And like, um, yeah, so for example, like I didn't know about UNESCO's website and they have a lot of information about open science. Oh, really? And, yeah. Okay, that's, that's interesting. I didn't know that either. Yeah, so I, I learned about that and then just, um, yeah, just getting in contact. Like I also didn't know about some of the Max Planck Society resources, like the Max Planck Digital Library, for instance. Um, What's the Max Planck Digital Library? That's a good question. Um, I believe it's actually... It's more of like, uh, actually, I have notes about this. Basically, it's like helping to manage the flow of information within the Max Planck Society. And I believe, um, so I also did uh, uh, some like research on this too, because I wasn't fully sure. But um, but yeah, it's like one of the three IT services within the Max Planck Society, or like three core IT services. And it basically allows researchers to access um, and view uh, these um, like scientific articles and it goes back to like the open access um, point as well and everyone has access to it I believe yeah yeah I, I think um, you just have to I think it's like through your institute I guess or like through max.mpg.de okay. yeah. And, yeah max page yeah I believe it's like that okay wait so it, it just helps you find papers or I believe have so, access yeah. to scientific journals I believe yeah that that is my impression okay. Um, although someone please correct me if I'm wrong, but yeah. Yeah, I didn't. I, I think you also uh, pay money to the the spray, um, or like you publish your paper before you, on the website. Okay. Pray, what's the name of this kind of website? Like, oh, oh yeah, a preprint. A, like a preprint. Yeah, preprint uh, website. I yes, remember yes, yes. One of the uh, Max Planck Digital Library even paid for them. Oh Sub really? Sponsored. Okay. Uh, okay. I guess they do a lot. I mean, I also didn't really, I don't know too yeah. much about them. So maybe this is a topic that we should have another podcast about if anyone wants to have a podcast about <laughs> the Max Planck Digital Library. Yeah. Paulina asked, what are the other sources except the UNESCO website can you recommend to read about good question. open science? Yeah. yeah, so wait, let me just repeat it so that um, everyone hears. Yeah. So we got a question. What are other um, websites other than UNESCO where you can find more information about open science? That's a good question. Um, I'm trying to think off the top of my head other resources that I found. The um, best would be to join the Open Science Working Group, yeah. I would say. <laughs> <laughs> that is I'm also joking. true. <laughs> yeah, and the Open Science Ambassadors as well. Um, I think the other one, too, was uh, trying to talk with... Apparently, I, I found out, like, every MPI, I think, has an ombudsperson or something. Yes, um, that's true. So, like, I think just getting in contact with them, and, like, um, this also goes for, like, conflicts with open science right now uh, as well. Like, if you feel like there's something, like, shady happening, then you can communicate with them, which I didn't know about, actually, until somewhat recently. Um, so I know that there's that. And then um, I'm trying to think of other resources that I, can, that I uh, went to. Mm. Your, um, I think the Ashmi said open access uh, network and uh, Kamigu said foster open science. Open and, uh, access check out, network? Uh, yes, and check out uh, open science website for lots of over rare resources. That is also true. Yeah, <laughs> yeah probably the open science uh, website is a good place to go. And maybe yeah. also this will encourage you to maybe post more there so that you know, th your website could also be the key point where people can find a lot of information about open science. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, yeah, cool. Um, are there any other questions? Uh, so I can't believe we've, we've been going for quite long. Yeah. Already. Wow. Yes, I think. I feel like it's a very, um, very hot topic. And I think a lot of people don't really know, like, what's, like everyone's slightly aware of open science, but not really what to do, yeah. where to find information, exactly. what's getting done within the Max Planck Society. So I think, um, I think the Open Science Ambassador Conference will be a great way 
to kind of stimulate discussion and bring knowledge back to the individual institutes and then work from there. So can you remind us again when and where the Open Science Ambassador Conference is? Yes, so it is September 19th and 20th, and it's going to take place in Harnack House in Berlin. Uh, So yeah, September 19th and 20th. And registration deadline is when? Oh, I actually, I'm not so sure about the registration deadline, but I would say the earlier the better. Okay. So like, yeah. And I'm sure it will say it also on the website. Yes, yeah, exactly. When the registration deadline is. Yeah. Um, are there any, when you register, is it just your name or are there any other requirements? Um, yeah, so you also have to give um, your institute as well because we just want to know that the institutes are well represented. And then also, um, uh, we also just want to know whether you'll have funding as well from your institute or group as well to attend. Um, and then also just dietary stuff too because we're going to provide food. So we want to know like if you have any allergies or dietary restrictions. Perfect. Yeah. yeah. And if anyone wants to join the Open Science Working Group, who should they contact? Ah, so if you just go on the Open Science website, we also have our contact email, and that will like contact us directly. Um, so then you can just email us, and then we'll be happy to have you join like our next meeting, and and yeah, just like keep you in the loop. Yeah, that's that's cool, and mm-hmm. um, I think I think that's also a great way to get information just by joining the group. You'll automatically learn a lot more about Open Science. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, so I think then we will end the Instagram Live if there's no other questions. We will be releasing this episode in two weeks' time. Um, so that will be on Spotify, YouTube, you name it. So if you want to listen back to it, if you've missed out on some information or if someone couldn't join, then um, yeah, that episode will be available in two weeks. And if you have any more questions that maybe I forgot to ask, or we didn't cover it, then just contact the Open Science Working Group. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So thank you, Lynn, so much for mm-hmm. taking the time to talk to me and to all of us about open science. And mm-hmm. hopefully you'll see a lot of people at the Open Science Ambassador Conference. And I wish you the best of luck with organizing it. Yeah, thank you so much for having us. Uh, and yeah, just like giving us a place to spread our word and everything. Yeah. So also to everyone listening, spread the word. (laughs) Bye. That's it. Thank you all so much for listening. If you would like to learn more about the Open Science Working Group and the Open Science Ambassadors Conference, you can visit their website, which you will find in the description below. And if you like our podcasts, please make sure to follow us on our Twitter, LinkedIn, and Instagram page. Thanks again for listening. Bye. Austrian Magazine, the podcast, is brought to you by the Max Planck PhD Net Science Communication Group known as the Austrian Magazine. The intro outro music is composed by Serena Frank Kumar, and the pre intro jingle is composed by Gustavo Carrizo. If you have any feedback, comments, or suggestions, please feel free to write us at offspring.podcast at phdnet.mpg.de. Until next week, stay safe, stay healthy. Bye!